Here are my first two Division B builds of the season. We have to choose between building a tower that attempts to get the extra 5 kg bonus for holding the entire 15 kg, like the tower on the right, or just sticking with a score that comes from its actual efficiency, or mass held divided by the tower mass. You can clearly see that because the base of the bonus tower it needs to span a 29 centimeter diameter circle, it's much larger than the non-bonus tower, which just needs to span the 20 centimeter square hole. It's obvious that the wider tower means more cross bracing material, but how much of an effect will the different angle have? You can probably guess that the ideal tower would have perfectly vertical legs, but just how much worse is the difference here, and what would we have to do to account for that? In this video, I'll look at the first part of that question by building two towers using the exact same design and essentially using the same material to see how they perform. In a later video, I will show what it will take to build a competitive bonus design tower. In a future video series, I'll show all the steps I take in detail to try out a new design, but for now I will just briefly describe them. The very first thing I did was print the assembly jigs I shared in the introduction video. That defines the very basic outline for both designs with respect to the minimum base dimensions, height, and angle. The next step was to pick the number of cross bracing layers. I chose 8 layers to begin with because my mini tower series showed that 4 layers worked really well for a 25 cm tall tower. Accounting for the angle of the tower, the leg length is 51 cm for the non-bonus version and 52 cm for the bonus version. The easiest way to figure that out is to just put a stick on the jig and measure it. I like to have a 0.5 cm space at the bottom of the tower. So for the non-bonus design, the layer length spacing is 50.5 cm divided by 8, or 6.3125 cm. Similarly, for the bonus design, it's 51.5 cm divided by 8, or 6.4375 cm. Next, I will mark all four legs at every spot a cross member will be attached. Now we need to know the length of every cross member piece. Again, the easiest way to figure this out is to just measure it with a ruler by taping the legs into place on the jig. All of those measurements are shown in green here, and you can see that for each layer we'll need 8 pieces, 2 for each X times 4 sides. With some simple math, it's easy to get the total length of all the cross members. Here it's 756 centimeters for the non-bonus version, and 932.8 centimeters for the bonus tower. My balsa sheets are just over 36 inches long, so I can estimate the number of complete strips I'll need for each design, roughly 8.1 and 10 respectively. You can already see that soon we'll be able to have a very accurate estimate of all the material going into our tower before we start any building. The next big step is to pre-cut all the material and do all the prep work before gluing anything. Here you can see I have the marked legs taped to the jig and all my cross member pieces are cut and arranged by layer. I like to cut my cross members at 2x length and just mark them in the middle. This keeps the number of free pieces on your workspace more manageable. I then just cut the cross member piece in half right before gluing those two pieces. For these builds, I have taped the jig to the working surface and will be gluing everything in a vertical orientation, but I discovered it's much better to do this line flat on the side once you have the legs taped in place to prevent gluing the tower to the jig. I will show that in more detail in future videos. This part of the build process takes a lot of practice and patience. There are a lot of glue joints to get through and every one is extremely important. I glue one side of the cross member at a time and use the side of a push pin to hold it in place for 6 or 7 seconds. Once both pieces of the X are in place, I then glue the center point. I like to build two complete opposite sides first. Once those two sides are done, take the time to sand any excess cross member pieces so you have a flat surface to work with for the remaining two sides. Once the other sides are complete, you can then sand the excess off the top to get a perfectly flat surface for the loading block to sit. With any luck, you will have not glued your tower to the jig and it will lift right off and you're left with a completed tower ready to be tested. Before I show the actual testing for these towers, let's take a look at my notebook log for each one. I'll block out the results as to not spoil the results. 
You can see that at a normalized length of 65 centimeters, I used almost identical 1 8 by 1 8 legs, and both builds used the same 1 32nd by 1 20th cross member pieces. Another very important thing to keep track of is the mass of each layer of the tower. You will see that this will become even more important in future builds. If you do the math, you can compute the glue usage for these two towers. It's a simple matter of subtracting the total mass of the legs and cross members from the as-built math. For these builds, it was around 0.7 grams. One of the benefits of building the tower horizontally was to reduce the glue mass to under 0.5 grams, as you'll see in future builds. Let's finally get to testing and see how they do. Here is the non-bonus tower right before testing, and it weighs 4.06 grams. Here is the live testing of the tower. You can see me pouring sand from a bucket into the funnel on the left side of the screen. It flows down a PVC pipe into the bucket hanging under the tower. I have built a custom load cell that dynamically measures the mass and retains the maximum value. That means it's not important that I stop the sand exactly when the device breaks as that excess sand will not be added to the weight held. Just like with conventional testing though, I do need to add the dead weight of the chain and block to the final amount to get the actual total mass held. For all of these tower tests, that amount is 203 grams. Okay, that wasn't too bad for a very first build. It held 12.252 kilograms, which makes its efficiency and competition score 3,018. I'll freeze the video right at the first signs of failure, and you can clearly see that one of the cross members near the bottom is failing first. We'll be able to use this information when we try and refine this build for the next iteration. Now let's see how the first bonus design tower does. Here it is right before testing at 4.38 grams. You can see that this version of the tower completely spans the 29 centimeter circle at the base. So if it holds all 15 kilograms, it will achieve the five kilograms additional bonus. Well, that certainly didn't hold 15 kilograms. It held a measly 5.626 kilograms, which gives a score of only 1,285. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened. It looked like the leg at the very top started to bend in, which started the failure. Aside from definitely needing stronger legs and cross member pieces to account for this more shallow angle, I'm going to tweak this design a bit for future builds by adding a horizontal cross piece at the very top to help prevent this type of failure in the future. So what can we learn from these initial builds? The first thing is that the materials I initially picked provided decent results for the non-bonus design, but were nowhere near strong enough for the bonus design. Also, with the more shallow angle of the tower, we might want to tweak the design to prevent the legs bending in at the top which didn't seem like a problem at all for the non-bonus version. In the next video, I will show a more refined non-bonus tower to try and get a good benchmark score. This will provide a target for future bonus builds to see if it's possible to build a tower using that design to compete with what is possible with the non-bonus version. If it's not possible to beat the non-bonus tower, it definitely won't be worthwhile building that design as it's much more risky because it needs to hold all 15 kilograms to get the bonus. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions.